slow. Slow? I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's so rude. Yeah. When I was sitting here thinking there's no place I'd rather be than up here running with you. Aw, thanks. That's so sweet. Oh, that's such a sweetheart. Ooh, you just got a message from Grace. Something about Jones Cut. Something, something. She said Jones Cut? Yeah. I need to get off the fucking mountain. Autumn. You were supposed to give me a call before you dropped the Jones cut that was supposed to happen to warn me so like I could prepare for this eventuality. Like I have supplements and shit that I needed to take before this happened, but like going in raw, I guess. Here's the deal. I've been trying to go up and see my little sister and have her teach me how to ski since Christmas and we've had to reschedule five times five times because of weather but after all the shit that was released yesterday i was like hmm should i maybe reschedule to thursday just so i can process all this new interview with the vampire stuff and i thought autumn god damn it no go see your sister you can do without interview with a vampire for a day <coughs> <coughs> right right okay that's funny that's really funny roland jones said bitch Try it. You can't. So yeah, I've been summoned off down the mountain, drove like a bat out of hell back home, and here I am to witness this uh, grandeur, this milestone of cinema, I'm sure. How am I feeling? How am I feeling? That's a good question. This is how I imagine people who have a lactose intolerance feel when they've found themselves parked in front of a cold stone creamery. And they're looking at that neon sign and thinking, God, don't you do it. Don't you fucking do it. You know what this is going to do to you. The consequences are monumental. You will not step out of that cold stone, the same person that you walked in as. But like they're looking at it and thinking, God, ice cream sounds good. That's how I'm feeling. I just know that from this moment on, everything is changing for me. Okay, I know that I come off as like really well adapted and normal in these videos and thank you for noticing that because truly I am. But it's a tough facade to keep up, you know? I can be crazy here on, on, with you guys, but out in the world, I have to pretend like this isn't all that I'm thinking about all the time, okay? But after this, I just don't see how that's gonna be possible. But like, YOLO, right? <laughs> Let's get this going. I don't even have it pulled up. I literally just skied myself off the mountain and then drove for a couple of hours. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. That's just so giving me life. <sighs> Roll in. Next time, like just hit me up. Give me a call. Type in my digits. Give me a text, a little bit of T9. Throw some emojis in there, it's great. Interview with a vampire. Listen to me. Interview with a vampire season two trailer. I've got to calm down. <laughs> this is grape juice. I put some horse tranquilizers in here to try to like mellow me out a bit. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's pull it up. <laughs> Oh my god. Thumbnail alone. What have I been saying? They said, Autumn, we heard you loud and clear. You want to see those fangs? Let's give you some fucking fangs. Oh my god. Okay. Armand, buddy, you look scary. You look violent. You look <laughs> dashing, can I just say. Louis staring into my soul. Little scratches on your face. Buddy, you've been through the ringer and I can't wait to see you just get wrung out a little bit more. You can do this. You can do this. I need someone to come out here and bust play for me, okay? I'm a normal person. 
I'm a normal person. I'm watching a trailer. People do this every day and they don't freak out. They just watch the trailer. Okay. They can be full of reminders of your condition. Never knowing. It is about to happen. I can't believe I'm already pausing it. Oh my god. We can't start with... <sighs> Get it together. The burning picture of Lestat. Okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. We're moving on. We're not pausing. Don't pause. <sighs> I didn't think it at the time. He lost control of the interview. Yes. He's skilled. He wants you in pieces for the privilege of putting them back together as he sees fit. It's his job. It's his drug. He's reveling in it. You should end it. Session 10. The vampire Louis and the vampire Armand. You have our attention. Are you two going to finish each other's sentences for the whole session? We've been together 77 years, Daniel. Should we let the last of that settle? She has something here, Claudia. Spark in the dark. Oh. I want to say something to you. <laughs> Our life is shit. It's been shit. It is shit. It's going to be shit again. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. A shit life beats no life. But where we're going now, we can't be running away again. Oh, my we're God. Find others like us. We can't be the only good ones out there. We here at Théâtre des Vampires delve into the underbelly of the human soul. We do horror shows so we can eat people. There is no scripting the start. You can't <laughs> have to hurry. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, he's your companion. Oh Oh my god! That's not the point she was making. Fuck these vampires. Mm -hmm. They're dead or alive. You fear Armand. You yeah. should fear the other one. Oh my god! I'm here, I'm just fucked in the head. You're stronger. Uh -huh. Harder too. But you gotta give up something to get something. Oh my god! Me and you. You and me. Me and you. I failed you once in my life. It wasn't in San Francisco. Oh, oh, oh my God! Hi, babe. My God, do you see that? <laughs> I'm fucking believable. I don't care. Emmys, Oscars, fucking Global Peace Prizes. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Holy shit. <sighs> I feel, I feel good. <laughs> I feel fine. <laughs> I feel fine. <sighs> this is crazy, right? I'm generally like a somewhat, I know it doesn't seem that way, a somewhat sane person, but oh my God. It's fine.
Everything is cool. Holy sh! I don't even know where to begin. How do I? Where do I even fucking begin? Cheers. <laughs> Here is to fucking everybody. And I mean everybody, okay? I'm not just talking Roland Jones. I'm not just talking the writing team. I'm not just talking the acting team, you know? I'm talking cinematography, I'm talking editing team, I'm talking costuming team, I'm talking behind, like, background actors, I'm talking people who helped make sure that they got the sets and the locations that they needed to. I'm talking people who uh, gave them hotels for everybody on the production crew to stay in so that they could make this happen, okay? Down to the fucking people who came up with the typography, ugh, typography for this. Cheers to fucking you guys. Oh my God. Do you see? I'm like Monica in that episode of Friends. I am not moving, and now I have got the steady hand. <laughs> <sighs> like I said, I don't even know where to start. Can I just, okay, okay, okay. Starting off, you know, Asad Zaman just had that interview yesterday. Well, it didn't happen yesterday. Not to brag or anything, where he responded to my question. She's a lucky, she's a star. But like released yesterday talking about like Louis and Armand's relationship, how it's very different from Lestat's relationship. It's a lot more kind of tender because you have to believe, like I think it was Jacob Anderson who said in an article a while ago, they had to make it, you know, totally different so that it's believable that like Louis would seek something else out of this relationship because if it was the exact same as his and Lestat, why would he do that to himself again? He's trying to run away from that. And <laughs> like, I obviously knew it was coming, but I <laughs> wasn't expecting it so <gasps> sweet cherry blossom on a sycamore tree. Oh my god, all the loving touches, all the loving glances, the little kisses, the looks, and then <laughs> comparing that so directly with the Lestat, like, jump scares almost, just coming out, what, the shit with the mask and him drag, being drug away, like, I... I assumed they would do, obviously, like, hallucinations and shit, but this is, like, full-on mental mindfuck shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that little thing with Armand. Lestat, Lestat, Lestat. That's all you ever talk about. Whatever he said. It's all over here. <sighs> and Claudia. Oh, my God. Uh, just calling him out again and again because it's so true. You chose someone else over me. Yet again, you fucking bastard! The shot of Louis and Claudia go <laughs> and Madeline's throat. <laughs> I calm down. Okay, okay. Is it hot in here to you guys? I am sweating. <sighs> oh my god! You don't even know the meaning of your own story, Daniel. You don't even know the meaning of your own story. That little, like, the quote, or the the conversation between Armand and Louis, like Armand reprimanding him, like you let him get too close, he's trying to, and again, you can see Armand's perspective of like wanting to protect him, like he's just trying to like tear you apart so he can sell the pieces. But like, holy shit, okay. Oh, <laughs> I, need to, I need to hydrate. Because I'm legitimately sweating. I'm sweating. I'm gonna go change into shorts. I, I can't. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't even know. How am I gonna make an analysis video? There's too many things. This is three and a half minutes. What am I gonna do when we get episodes? Where did my fucking remote go? Did I throw it away? Did it disappear into the ether and all of my excitement? Did I fucking eat it? Somebody tell me, did I eat my remote? 
I could have, and I'm just so fucking high on life, I wouldn't know. Here it is. <sighs> okay, so, <sighs> <sighs> we're gonna watch it again. We're gonna watch it again. <sighs> I don't know if I can take watching it again. Oh my God. I'm supposed to move out in two months. The day that season two premieres actually, that's my move out date. Isn't that exciting for me? And the apartment team's gonna come around knocking at my door being like, hey, we haven't heard from you. And they're finally gonna bust it down and just find me confetti all over this living room. I don't know if I'm gonna make it through another viewing of this trailer. Let's get another hit of this horse tranquilizer. It's not fucking working. <laughs> I doubt that anyone thinks this, but I'm being paranoid. I just wanna clarify, since there is a popular recreational drug, ketamine, that is a horse tranquilizer. I know you don't drink it, but still just wanted to have it out there. This is a bit I'm doing with the horse tranquilizer. I know you know that. I just, like I said, Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, okay. Where did my emotional support pillow go? What the fuck? Where is my pillow? Oh, I threw it. <laughs> sorry, buddy. I didn't mean it when I threw you. It was just, I was overexcited. I'm sorry. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Okay. Is how it happened. I didn't think it at the time, but yeah. May I make an observation? You lost control of the interview. Yes. He skilled. Ugh. <sighs> the overlapping shots of Louis in the present day talking to uh, Louis. I'm it looks like from the 70s you know composited over each other and Armand you know talking over him in this moment I mean it's just brilliant just echoing how <sighs> honestly Armand's quote right here it could be talking he could be talking about the first interview or the second one I do think it's the first one just because I think Armand at this point maybe has a like more uh more grace for Daniel uh, versus what he would have had in the first interview. But the fact that it can go either way just shows that, you know, what's that quote about like the meaning of insanity isn't doing the same thing over and over again. It's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Louis trying to do this interview yet again with this idea that he's going to like, you know, just be able to like tell this story that he wants to tell and that's not going to happen because as he himself states he Daniel's a good interviewer and he's going to weasel out what's really lying underneath here and the fact that Louis tries to circumnavigate that twice just kind of again shows that, like his character of just like getting caught and doing the same things to himself over and over again and how he's got to have something to smack him out of it and that's daniel oh my god this is genius okay moving on he wants you in pieces for the privilege of putting them back together as he sees this his job this crazy also like this shot of armand just casually floating at the bookcase with like daniel and louie walking around. just it shows I know, like, this is very, I don't, heavy handed's not the word. It's, it just, it's just such like the perfect visual reminder to you how much above Armand is from Louis and Daniel, how much more powerful he is, how much more of a command he has over the situation. So we think at this point in time, but Daniel and Louis, Louis, because Louis is showing in this interview that he's now, he is willing to open up and try to figure out what's at the bottom of this. But at this point in time, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, okay. It's his drug. It's his he's drug. reveling in it. You should end it. Session 10, the vampire Louis and the vampire Armand. You what did I say? Ah, 
I'm sorry. I'm just caught up in like the revelry of this shot of Armand and Louis just sitting together. I mean, <laughs> beauty. What does it mean compared to these two? But what did I say? Well, I think it's come out uh, again in that like interview that Assad Zaman did recently. He, or maybe it was something, maybe it was an interview with Eric Bogosian, but one of them, I think, mentioned how Armand is in fact going to be a part of the interview moving forward to kind of help Louis like get back on track to his story. <gasps> so who is right about that? I mean, I'm sh a lot of people probably guess that, but I'm just saying I said it, okay? Bow our attention. Are you two gonna finish each other's sentences for the whole session? Oh my God. <laughs> that look. Okay. We've been together 77 years, Daniel. Oh. Should we let the math of that uh. go? Uh. Spark in the dark. Oh, she's gorgeous. Oh my God, look at her. Our life is shit. It's been shit. It is shit. It's gonna be shit again. The oh, Stop. hey. <laughs> hey. Who is that crawling out of the hole? It was Claudia. It's Claudia now crawling out of the hole. The hand. Okay, whatever. I don't know why I've spent so much time on that fucking hand, but I have. So there, whatever. Claudia in her blue dress. Oh, she's darling. Oh, she's darling. Feeling sorry for yourself. A shit life beats no life. Let me wind that back. Oh shit, I wind it. Oh, okay. Well, not that I mind. Okay, play. You have our attention. Are you two going to finish each other's sentences for the whole session? He's so sassy. Then, we're going to find others like us. <laughs> I'm just imagining Louis giving this pep talk to Claudia and, you know, be like, we're going to find others like this. And then just knowing what the others like you do. For fucking Claudio! Oh! Deserved better. Honestly, she had every right to haunt his motherfucking ass. Him and Lestat, absolutely as she should. She should have come back and haunted more people. Honestly, it wasn't either of their faults. But they were like the consequences leading up to things happening. Oh my god. Okay, moving on. We can't be the only good ones out there. Can't be the only good ones out there. The shot of the Revenant vampire. Oh my god. I'm so thrilled. If you didn't catch from like all the stuff that I've talked about with these Revenants, I'm so psyched that they're delving into that storyline because it's such a fun, interesting differentiation between, you know, these very like high class, you know, vampires who suffer so fucking much with, you know, their purpose and all this other stuff in life and having that in opposition, like just these like typical monster monsters. I love it. And I remember reading the book and being shocked, just shocked that the movie would cut that out. And I know that there's like a lot of story to tell, but it's such an interesting like, dynamic, just from like a horror perspective and like storytelling perspective to have that. It's, it's good, fun conflict to throw in there, but also like for all the, the differences in like characterization that that can bring. Oh, so pumped. Winding it back 10 seconds. Others like us. We can't be the only good ones out there. Okay. Welcome. We here at Théâtre des Vampires delve into the underbelly of the Sexy. Human soul. We do horror shows so we can eat people. There is no script. <laughs> Why was he eating the paper? Oh, 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 oh. they're mad with his face out. Oh, let's take it back. Let's see it again. We do horror shows so we can eat people. There is no scripting Lestat. Ah! Uh, there is no scripting Lestat. I wonder if this, that's, is that Armand like talking to the theater? Prepping up for the trial? Are they gonna throw, are they gonna throw Lestat 
on the stage, like with this whole kind of setup in mind, because Armand knows Lestat's going to dig himself into a hole, put his foot in his mouth every single fucking time. And so he's going to allow that to happen. So then Louis sees this playing out. Lestat obviously uh, says some shit. And Louis like further thinks that Lestat is part of this and maybe acting out like as revenge against like him and Claudia and and he oh he thinks Lestat is part of all of this like conspiracy like sh oh I don't know though I don't know because like and maybe, you know, that's why he was so angry still in the 70s. But then why now? Why now would he ease up on him? Maybe after, maybe after some time, he, thinking back on it, he's like, well, maybe, I don't know, there was more to it than that. And he wasn't necessarily, huh, 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 oh, wind it back 10 seconds. There is no scripting the start. You cannot script a hurricane. Whoa, 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 wait. Was, that was, wait, no, that was Lestat in the 1700s, right? And this is him now. <gasps> That's Claudia in a yellow dress right back there. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh no! So this is Lestat walking down the aisles in that photo that they released a couple months back and we all assumed it was from the trial and now we know it is for sure from the trial because Madeline's up there on stage Claudia's up there on stage and her fuck in the fucking yellow dress. And let me get my glasses back on. Is that Louis next to her? I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. Because that looks like the outfit that he was wearing in that clip where they were like holding him back. Oh. <laughs> hiding like I want to do now. Oh no. And look at what's on the screen behind them. Flames, some columns, some doors, Santiago's and like a wig, like a, like the wigs they wear, you know, over, I don't know if it's all of Europe, but I know they do in Britain when, you know, the judge and everything like that. It's very goofy and silly. Why do they do that? Santiago is the judge here? Maybe. It looks like, is that like a stenographer in the background? Like the court stenographer? Holy sh- Okay. Holy- Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Let's start feeding on Armand. Oh, in the 1700s. Oh my god. Lisa and his son. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Lesmond is real. It's real, everybody. And it's happening before your eyes. Look away if you must. But I will stare directly at it like I did when I was a child at the sun. That's why I think I need to wear glasses now. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it back. Hold it back. W wind it up. Wind it up. Gwen Stefani, wind it up. There's no scripting the start. You cannot script a hurricane. Oh my god. <gasps> okay, okay. That's a crazy cut. That's a crazy cut. Having Lestat and Armand directly after that, Louis and Armand. You see this? You see this happening? This is 
this is the weird interesting little three-way relationship fucked up situation ship that they all have together okay like do you think both louis and armand were both thinking of listat in that moment no but like it's a possibility right <laughs> i don't know if i have enough stamina to keep going i can feel this like taking away my life source but i will gladly give it Take me, Monsieur Vampire. <sighs> Let me guess he's your companion, finally. Picked another one over me! Her sucks. That's not the point she was... <sighs> she? Oh! God, she's... Oh! Stunning. The rage. The fucking disdain on her face right now in this shot. Oh, my God. Oh! She's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little chrysanthemum. Manky. Fuck these vampires. I'm gonna get out alive. You fear Armand. You should fear the other one. Hmm. <laughs> okay. The Justin Kirk. You fear Armand. You should fear the other one? Louis? And what's he doing here? Okay, okay. Rewind the tapes. Last year, there's a photo released of, like, the interview with a vampire team getting dinner, I think, somewhere. And a bunch of sleuths were like, holy shit, I think that's Justin Kirk. And I remember looking at it, and I was like, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I didn't think it was conclusive enough to say that it was him for sure. And look at me. Ha <laughs> ha! Wrong! Uh wrong bitch there he is here's the other thing though if all those sleuths were like he's for sure getting like cast on to play marius but like how did that even come about why did we think that he was going to be playing marius of all people i d act now that i'm thinking about it i can't remember like if there was any conclusive reasoning for why everyone was like he's absolutely playing marius or if that was just like everybody willing it to happen but who is he? What's he doing here? Why is Daniel talking to him? This has to be like in the penthouse, right? Because they wouldn't let Daniel out. Although, Dubai Sushi, remember that? <laughs> there was a photo released last year, I think of uh, like I, uh, like production ideas and notes and everything on the wall. And there was something about Dubai Sushi and people were like, what is Dubai Sushi? Um, uh, are they gonna go out and get sushi? <laughs> If this is in the penthouse, why is he here? Who is Justin Kirk playing? If it is Marius, when he says, you're afraid of Armand, you should be afraid of the other one. Is he talking about Louis or is he talking about Lestat? Ah, oh, but why would, why would Marius be here? Because Armand thinks that Marius is dead. I don't know. I, what, <sighs> clearly he knows the vampires. He's got to be a vampire too, right? Maybe he's part of house staff. No. Oh my God, so many questions boiling in my brain. I can feel it frying like a fucking spam in a cast iron skillet. Why is he talking to Daniel now? Who are you? Hmm. I mean, direct cut to Louis after he says that. So he's thinking about Louis, because Louis's volatile. Louis's not in control. That's not the point she was making. Fuck these vampires. I'm gonna get out alive. You fear Armand. You should fear the other one. Did I hear him just fucking hit? Oh! You're stronger. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. We're moving on. You're stronger. Harder too. But you gotta give up something to get something. You and me. Me and you. You and me. Me and you. You and me. I mean you. <sighs> All these shots. Louis is clearly talking to Claudia and saying it's you and me, me and you, you and me, me and you. But then directly cutting to uh, you know louis and claudia but then louis and armand then louis and santiago 
Louis and Daniel, and then Louis and Lestat. Mmm. This is like a sedimentary rock. Fucking layers, bro. Ow! I failed really once in my life. It wasn't in San Francisco. That was enough. You buy that? <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. There's so many things in that just 10 seconds. Ah, too, oh my god, it's whoa, too much for my brain to compute. Okay, okay, trying to like go back to the beginning. I failed Louis once in his life and it wasn't in San Francisco. So clearly, like, Armand has regrets about how things went down in Paris. Sure. And then, oh, throwing a heart at the screen. And was that Lestat leaning in for a kiss with Armand? Oh! Uh, <laughs> was it? I need to know. Let's wind the tapes back, girl. Um, okay. I failed really once in my life. It wasn't in San Francisco. Ah! That was enough. You buy that? Ah! Oh my god. Are Lestat and Armand gonna kiss? <laughs> I need to get this in. I need to get this in my editing software right away so I can look at the zoom and enhance baby and see. But I think that's Armand. His hair looks longer though. It's tied back. It looks like Lestat might be in that pinstripe suit in the theater. Is this before the trial when he's asking for blood? Oh. Oh. <sighs> I mean, who I okay, we gotta wind it back again. Pieces of my life gone. I knew who I was without those pieces. No, you didn't, Louis, because you need those pieces to inform you of who you are now. Really, as a totality, not just some makeshift character that you want to come up with. You need to find out who you really fucking are. Oh my god, there's just too much. There's like, oh, a million things going through my mind. Every single second, every frame, like, I want to talk about and I just I gotta ah oh, shot of Daniel being young Daniel being thrown against a wall that shot of Armand and someone else floating up in the background what the hell is that it's Santiago he be zooming man ah. Jacob Anderson, I will get you that Emmy if I have to, to, to infiltrate the academy myself. I will, I will commit voter fraud for you, okay? I will pretend to be every single participating member of the academy and put your name down on the ballots. We're making this happen. <laughs> okay. I need to shut the fuck up. Because I need to start editing right now. Uh... And then I'll, oh my God, I've got to take all of this in, synthesize, and just like allow myself to be a little tea bag steeping in the hot boiling waters of whatever the fuck all of that shit was. <laughs> yeah, I feel great. I feel great. Um, cheers, everybody. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this. I don't give a shit if you didn't. I did. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank God. God. Getting down on my knees here. Hands around your holy blood here. That's what this is. I'm taking communion. Do I have bread? No. But I have an almond. And that'll suffice. Dear God, I take upon into mind body, your body. I take into mind body, your blood. Wash over me and make me holy as you have made the Jones cut holy. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna start editing. Bye everybody. <laughs> there was so much stuff that I thought that I verbalized. And upon editing and rewatching this video, I came to realize I just was silently thinking it in my head. I was like, no, but where's that thing I said about Santiago here? Or that thing I said about Lestat? And then I was like, oh, well, here's 30 seconds of you just staring off in t at, at the screen in silence. You just never spoke the words for people to hear, just yourself to hear. So it was very hard not to go back and interject my thoughts into this video after the fact. Right now when I'm editing, it was also very hard when there were things that I said that I'm like, no, I don't agree with that anymore now that I've rewatched it, but I kept it in because I wanted to show the organic thought processes. All of this to say, uh, yeah, there's going to be another deeper analysis video coming because I want to talk about everything. Everything. That's going to take me a while, okay? Uh, so <laughs> see you next year. <laughs> And, uh, until then, uh, I tried to think of something quippy, like, related to the Jones cut, but I'm still just so mind-fucked. Okay, bye. Jesus.